so I'm going to show you how to make a seamless pair of baby mittens okay that means there's not going to be a seam and what I'm planning on doing is doing a Kitchener cast on with um, with the stockinette stitch and then at the wrist do a rib stitch okay so I'm using a 28 peg loom you can use a 24 peg loom it's the same concept um, you can use just keep this in mind this is guide on how to do this so what you want to do is you want to take the loom undivide it in half so I have 28 divided by 2 is um, 14 okay so I want to count over 14, 14 pegs. So there's one of my starting point, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so here's where my starting point's going to be. Okay, I'm going to slip that through there in between those two loops, which is your halfway point. So get an idea of where your halfway point is, and mine was 14. What you're going to do for your Kitchener is you want to wrap in front of the peg and behind it. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to wrap in front of the peg and behind it. Go to the next one over, wrap in front of the peg and behind it. The next one over, front and peg behind it. Next one, front and the peg behind it, front and the peg behind it. And you want to keep this going front to back and that's how it's going to work best when you go to tighten the Kitchener cast on front to back and you want to do this all the way over to the other side make sure you don't miss any pegs okay it's important not to miss any pegs front to back front to back front to back and it's going to be important to keep with that patterning because if you don't you'll have a mess when it goes to actually tightening the okay make sure that you don't have any missing oh see I have a missing peg see so we have to make sure that we don't have a missing peg anywhere so front to back okay there we go now I don't have any missing pegs okay so you don't want to make you want to make sure you don't have any missing pegs and then what you want to do is you want to do a single row of knit and that is your Kitchener cast on and when you do that make sure that you get the entirety over don't have a little section missing because you won't be able to pull it cleanly so make sure that you don't have a partial bit of the yarn when tossing it make sure it's the complete yarn when you toss it over if you don't then you will have a mess when it comes see I want to make sure I have the full stitch when to toss it over. Okay. Because if I don't, it'll be a mess when I go to tighten it. And you might want to put a thumb underneath so that it doesn't completely come undone when you get to the other side where you started. Okay, and then knit your way around. Now doing a seamless pair of baby mittens is very much like making a sock, except you're not going to do a heel. So keep that in mind, alright? Okay, so there is my Kitchener cast on and this is what it should look like okay now what you're going to do to get yourself started is you're going to do a single row of knit all right so row one is going to be knit all right so and I'm doing a flat knit and the way I do a flat knit where it doesn't get too tight is I pull it out up back drop out up 
back drop. And that actually keeps it loose and makes it almost like a unit so that you can work faster. So you want to go around like that and that should get you started. Okay, then you're going to want to set up for the fingertips. And this is up to you how many um, times you want to decrease it down to. But you're going to be working on whatever half of the loom you have. So I'll be working on my 14 pegs this way. So what I want to do is I want to knit over 13 pegs. And by the way, this is a 28 peg, 3 8 inch gauge loom. And it comes with a four package kind of kit. Um, I think it's the adult large, but not extra large on the 3 8 inch gauge. Okay, I'm going to stop just before. So I knit my 13 and I wrap and turn and I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to knit 11. Basically, I'm knitting all the way back over to here. And I'm going to stop just before my last peg. And I'm going to wrap and turn. And I'm going to knit my way over. You shouldn't have to do so many wraps and turns to get that really nice curve where the fingertips are. So what you're going to do is you're going to wrap and turn. See there's your last wrap and turn. There's your next wrap and turn. And you're going to knit all the way over to the other side and stop just before the last wrap and turn. Wrap and turn as you can see just where the last wrap and turn. Wrap and turn. Then you're going to knit over till just before the last wrap and turn. There's the last wrap and turn just before it. Wrap and turn. Just before the last one, wrap and turn. I think we're going to get it down to six, and we have eight, so we're going to knit over till just before the last one, wrap and turn. So we're going to work it down to where there's six single stitches between wraps and turns. Wrap and turn, so we have four over here. If you want to know if you're getting close, one, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay, so another wrap and turn, and you should have four on this side, four on the other side, and knit your way over one, two, three, four, five, six, and stop. Okay, so you have four wraps and turns, four wraps and turns. This is a part of the fingers, all right? Well, what we want to do is we want to do the other half of the fingers. Okay, so we're going to start increasing. And what we're going to do is we're going to knit back the direction, knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, then knit two together. Then you're going to go back the other direction. And you're going to knit seven, knit two together. Knit seven, knit two together. Okay. You're going to continue doing that row by row, adding in a wrap and turn. So this will be knit eight, knit two together. And then knit nine, knit two together. And 
Okay, and then knit 10, knit 2 together, and you continue this process until you have no more wraps and turns sitting there on the outer edges. Okay, we hit in our last wrap and turn, and what we're going to do is we're going to go and finish the row. So we're going to knit the rest of them all the way around. Okay. Well, now we're to the bulk of the mitten. Okay. And what I've decided to do in order to calculate it up because as you can see that's quite a bit of space there right there okay so um, what I'm going to do is use my divided number and half of my pegs and I'm going to do um, let's see I want to make sure on this okay now you may have an idea of how much hand you want you can also do a swatch on this to figure out what you exactly want to do. Um, I'm dividing it in half and I have 14. Well, I'm going to divide that in half again. I'm going to do seven rows of knit and then I'm going to do seven rows of a rib stitch and um, then I'm going to be binding off. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to do seven rows of just knitting circularly. So like this is row one and if you think it needs to be longer, do 10 rows. Go by however many you think is necessary to get the length that you want for the baby mittens. Okay, I'm going to do a total of seven rows. And this is row one. Okay, so continue around for seven total rows circularly and then I'll go in to show you how to do the rib stitch for your mittens and then we will go from there okay so we're gonna finish the last seven rows as a rib stitch and I'm going to do a two by two and if you ever want to figure out if it'll work is if it's a two by two you're using up a total of four pegs that's a full complete pattern and um, what you'll do is you'll divide whatever your peg number is by four um, because it's a total of four and if it comes out even then it'll work if it comes out with a decimal point and something after it, it won't work so what we're going to do is we're going to knit two purl two and we're going to do this all the way around. So you're going to knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. Purl two, knit two, 
purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And you're going to continue this row that we just did for six more times for a total of seven rows and then I will show you the modified bind off so that you have a stretchier area for the wrist. Okay, so go about doing what we just did, seven more, um, for a total of seven rows, so six more times, and then we will go from there. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the modified bind off to finish up the knitting part of this and then I'll show you how to go about closing up the uh, Kitchener cast on. So what you want to do is you want to knit pegs one and two, then you want to move stitch two to peg one, toss the bottom loop over, and move that stitch over one. Then you want to knit pegs one and two, take loop two, put it on peg one, toss the bottom loop over. knit peg one and two, take the second stitch, put it onto peg one, toss the bottom loop over. You're going to continue this process all the way around and this is a modified bind off and what it does is it allows give but to me it has a cleaner bind off than doing um, some of the other loose bind offs that I've seen, the really super stretchy bind offs, to me have a um, sloppy finish. This one has a quite a bit cleaner finish while giving you the stretch you need. So you want to do this all the way around, and then um, I'm going to show you a trick so that it connects where you started here and finished here so that it stays nice and clean. So, um, go ahead and finish up all the way around and then I'll show you a trick. Okay, to show you the finished off of the bind off, you want to knit pegs one and two, move stitch two, peg one, toss the bottom loop over, and you'll see there's a gap here. What you'll want to do is you'll want to see that gap, then you'll see that, and then you'll see like a first kind of chain. You want to pull that up and put it back on the peg. You'll want to toss the loop over and then wrap the peg and toss over. Then you can cut the stitch and pull through. Okay, and then you can just tighten it. Now you can pull that so that the rib stitch starts really showing up. And as you can see, that's a much neater um, kind of stretchy bind off. Now, we have the situation of how do we get our Kitchener cast on closed. All right, so you wanna find your tail, and there's your tail, and you wanna to go to the opposite side. Okay, so there's our tail, we're going to go to the opposite side. And what we're going to do is we're going to find our first one, which that looks to be it. We're going to lightly tug it at where it's tightening. And then what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what the next one is. And this looks like it's the next one. You're going to lightly tug and it's going to be down here. You see it. Okay, you see that connection. Alright, now once you know the pattern that you started, you've just been at the bottom, you know that you're going to find the next one and you're going to pull from the top, see? See that? It tightens at the top. Then you're going to go back down to the bottom, find your next loop, lightly tug it first so that you know that you're pulling the right one. You're tugging and you're seeing that it's going from the bottom and close it. Because you did the bottom, you're going to go to the top, find the next one and you're going to lightly pull it, make sure it's the right one. That's how you don't get yourself in a knot, you lightly pull it to make sure it's the right one. You did the top, now you're going to go back down to the bottom. It's like a 
jagged line up down up down so we're here down at the bottom we're going to lightly tug make sure we're pulling the right one and then you're going to pull then you know you're going to be going up and we're going to lightly pull so we know that we've got the right one at the top and then you're going to go back down to the bottom find the next stitch to pull lightly pulling it so I know that I've got the right one and pull it go back to the top because it's up lightly pull that's the right one lightly pull first okay when you lightly pull it first then you know you've got the right one okay we've done the top we're gonna go back down to the bottom remember this is like a jagged line up down up down so we're down at the bottom we're gonna pull it now we're gonna go back up to the top we're going to lightly tug oh that's not moving that's not the right one okay let's try this one ah there it is we found it move that one out of the way and pull okay now you see what I just did there I lightly tugged and I saw that it wasn't moving what I needed to now we were at the top we're gonna to go down to the bottom we're gonna tug a little and it's moving we're gonna pull okay now we're gonna go up to the top because we just did the bottom we're gonna lightly tug that's not moving it okay so we're gonna lightly tug that one that one's moving it move that out of the way and pull light tug first tells you whether it's the right one okay we're gonna go down to the bottom because we just at the top and pull okay we're gonna go back to the top light tug wrong one all right light tug there on the next one over and that one's it so we're gonna lightly tug it all the way then we're gonna go back down to the bottom okay and there's that now that's where things can get a little that's why you have to do a light tug first to make sure you're tugging the right one okay so we're going to slightly tug that one and it's the right one it's moving we're at the top again okay then we're going to go back down to the bottom we're going to see if this is the next one lightly tug it and it is moving okay so we're going to go in and tug that okay then we're going back to the top remember up and down lightly tug it if it's moving that's the right one so lightly tug it that's the trick okay then you're going to go back down lightly tug it's moving so that's the right one okay then we're going to go back up to the top we're going to pull that one it's moving so that's the right one so we're going to tug it snug okay go back down to the bottom light tug it is moving so that's the right one okay then you're going to come over here and you're going to go up again light tug it's moving so that's the right one it's going to get more and more complicated the further over to the tail you get over here but once you get the idea of this it, it, it moves easier okay this is the one that's poking up so you can hope that that's the right one which it is it's moving so you're going to tug on it and you're going to tug from the bottom when you're at the bottom you're going to tug from the top when you're at the top okay so the next one looks like it's this one let's see lightly tug it lightly and it's moving so that's it and you're going to constantly pull from that top okay particularly when you start getting to the edge because if you start pulling from the middle you're going to be tightening the next one and you're not going to be able to find it so easily okay so we just did the top and it's time for us to go to the bottom all right so that's the next one that we see sticking up lightly tug it it is moving it so we're going to pull from the bottom so that we are messing up our next thing to pull now it looks like we should be getting to the actual tail and we are we're at the tail okay then you're just going to pull it and there you have your Kitchener cast on tightened and your little mitten is done now if you feel like you want to add say 10 rows here for a little more that's fine it's up to you 
um, but this works up pretty fast for a little mitten. Um, you can do the same number of rows for the 24 peg and you can decrease it down to 6 on the 24 peg. You're just going to be using the 12 limbs, uh, the 12 pegs instead of 14 because that's your halfway point. You wrap and turn and down and then all the way back out again and you just repeat the same number of rows that I did for this one. You do a modified bind off and then do the exact same stuff. So for the 24 peg loom you just follow it the same pretty much except you're working between 12 pegs rather than 14 on your wrap and turn section which is pretty self-explanatory. So that's how you make a baby mitten with it being seamless. And you'll want to snip that end and then go in and weave in your ends on both of them. And then you'll have it. Then that's it. You're done.